Chainsaw Man chapter 156 is that one chapter in Chainsaw Man part two that has managed to do something to me that Chainsaw Man has not done since that terror spree that Makima went on at the end of part one. I legit finished this chapter at a loss for words at the situation that Denji found himself in. In hindsight, we all knew that this moment was coming at some point in the story. The foreshadowing has been there for a while, but to see it here in real time, that's something that breaks your heart to see the position that Denji is in. However, let's back things up and let's dive into the review itself because man, there's a lot to unpack here. We open up this chapter with Denji waking up in the hospital bed and our first sign that something isn't quite right is we see a helicopter flying away and while that might not seem like much, the imagery is what really stood out here. You got the smoke coming up from the top of the building, a helicopter flying away, and when Denji wakes up, the first thoughts that he have, they're about Nayuta, and the alarm bells went off in my head right away there. It doesn't help that when Denji is coming to his senses, Yoshida is standing there looking every bit as creepy and suspect as he is, and he's dodging Denji's questions in a condescending manner. After this chapter, if we still got Hirofumi Yoshida fans out there, I'm going to need to see confirmation that you guys actually have a heart because this dude was reeking of being heartless in this chapter. Yoshida is shown making an expressionless face when Denji demands to know what happened to Nayuta and when Denji tries to get out the bed to go confront him to demand answers, he falls out the bed and that's where we get the next set of alarm bells. It should be going off in your head. Yoshida tells Denji something truthful, which is that he's apparently been asleep for an entire week, that he can't walk right away Way, and that's actually something factual in real life. It's called sleep paralysis, which happens after you've been in a deep stage of sleep. When you wake up, your brain might be fully functional. Your body, however, isn't because it's still stuck in that deep sleep stage and the paralysis can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes to wake up. It's the same thing like if you're laying down for too long and when you get up, your arm is asleep or your leg is asleep, which makes it harder to move for a while until your body catches up with your brain, telling the body that, hey, dummy, it's time to move. That's kind of what Denji you would think is going through right now. However, this ends up being the worst thing for Denji because this is the one time where he does need to try and move because he's in danger and Yoshida's words carry that underlying threat as a result. Yoshida Yoshida tells Denji bluntly that he's in this situation because he broke the rules established as a part of their agreement, which is that Denji wasn't ever to transform into Chainsaw Man, and if he honored that agreement, Yoshida would guarantee he could live a normal life and nothing bad would ever happen to Nayuta. As we all know, Barm and the rest of the nut job devil hybrids, they forced Denji into an impossible situation where he had to finally cave in and transform into Chainsaw Man. And we see that he just so happened to do it right in front of Fumiko. And it's after Denji falls back to sleep that we see Fumiko pulled a Takashi 6ix9ine and basically took the stand and pointed at Denji and said that that's him. She snitched on him. When she ran away, she really just went back to public safety and told him everything that happened. And we get the gut-wrenching truth here. Yoshida's words, they were not an empty threat. Denji is currently being scheduled to get dismembered and Yoshida is completely stoic as a result of it. He's showing no empathy for Denji's situation and it makes you look back at all those moments in part two where Yoshida and Denji, it looked like Yoshida was kind of playing that Aki Hayakawa role. Yoshida was really doing what was best for Yoshida. Meanwhile, you got Fami showing off those crazy girl vibes where she's asking to take whole ass souvenirs of Denji to remember him by and the anger that those panels make you feel towards Fumiko switches to sadness because we go from Denji being scheduled to be dismembered to Pochita walking onto the screen where Denji's talking about trying to save Nayuta and Pochita drops the bombshell that just breaks your heart. How is Denji going to save Nayuta when his legs are being cut off and we get the gruesome set of panels where the doctors are cutting Denji into pieces all while he's asleep and Pochita's smiling at Denji as this is happening. Now, longtime Chainsaw Man fans, we knew that public safety, they had the capability to do something like this. It's one of those threats that Makima gave to Denji and Power right at the start of the series saying, hey, if you don't do what I'm telling you, then you're going to get exterminated. And now we know exactly how that would have happened because Denji 
is in a facility that specializes in devil extermination and devil hunters are operating in the room with the orders to kill Denji should he wake up and start causing trouble trying to escape and that this is a place where no devil has ever successfully gotten out. We're seeing Denji coming closer to hitting the bottom as Chainsaw Man continues that theme of the gradual dehumanization of Denji at every corner. Just as you think that Denji turns a corner and gets a normal life, Fujimoto rips your heart out again. And I personally am enjoying this heartbreak because we see that Naita gave Denji something to live for. And with him being removed from her last week and us knowing that she got her memories of Makima through reading Denji's own memories, things are going to get even more heartbreaking for Denji if he somehow survives this because we can't rule out a possibility that Naita ends up joining the other horsewomen. However, we end the chapter off with another person standing outside the facility to, I'm going to assume, break Denji out of it. And my two guests are best girl Reze, which might be a long shot, but hey, a guy can hope, right? We've been seeing so many hybrids from part one show up from Quancy to Bomb to the Sword Devil hybrid, so why can't we see best girl Reze? Especially during a time where Denji really needs to see her, and one of the last times we saw Reze before Makima gutted her down, she wanted to go be with Denji, and when she fought against Makima in the Control Devil arc, so I got hope that we might see Reze at some point. However, the second guess is the one I think is most likely. Asami Taka and this is why I have caution. Is this Mitaka in control of herself or is this most likely Mitaka being controlled by Yoru and given that Yoru wants to kill Chainsaw Man and she's powered up in a major way it makes me wonder if when we go back to the opening chapter pages with that black smoke that's coming out of that building in the distance if that wasn't just a byproduct of Yoru's mischief which I won't put it past her at all. The other concern that I have here given where we are with Denji and public safety right now and potentially Yoru being out at the front door. It feels like we're going headfirst into that Nostradamus prophecy, and it feels like this might be the end game. And I hate to even say that, but we need to start setting the countdown timers for the end of Chainsman's story, because unless there's some major unexpected part three coming, Denji's story, it feels like this might be in that final arc. This feels like this might be a series similar to Demon Slayer that goes for about 23, 24 volumes. I'm getting the vibes I did after Naruto and Sasuke clash at that five Kage summit in Naruto, which thankfully that final arc ended up taking four years to complete as a weekly manga. So fingers crossed, this doesn't end too soon, but given how Fujimoto's been ramping up the pacing, I think another 50 to 100 chapters, it might do it. And if we do get the four horsewomen assembled, because it wasn't by mistake that Naita's whereabouts weren't dropped in this chapter. Nobody knows where she is, and she's a giant Chekhov's gun waiting to go off in the future. This might be the start of the end game for Chainsman. However, as of right now, it does feel like Yoru with her showing up after having been in the background for this long where we haven't heard a peep from her from the moment that she powered up. It makes me think Fujimoto is about to pick violence very quickly and it makes sense. Usually in part two, if we spend a ton of time with Denji, we end up shifting back to Asa Mitaka and Yoru for more character driven stuff that slows down the pacing because Fujimoto is building up their character. But now that Yoru and Mitaka have been built up, I think that the foot's going to stay on the gas here. It's been a week in universe since Denji transformed. And I fear that should Yoru be at her peak power right now, I don't think it's crazy to say that Yoru has powered up like that. The fear of Chain to Man Church versus public safety and all the chaos after the falling devil. It feels like Yoru, when she returns, it's going to be overpowered as hell because the narrative told us that Fami needed Yoru and Denji both powered up to take down the Death Devil, especially since Naita isn't as strong as Makima was. And Fami should know that Denji should be a lot stronger now because of everything that's happened and Yoru, we know that she's gotten stronger. This is so good and depending on how things play out in the next chapter with Yoru and Mitaka, this might give us more answers about how and what Yoru's been up to after that Yoshida fight. I'm still holding out hope that Reze's out there to save Denji, but smart money is that this is Yoru and it just reeks of Yoshida getting chopped up as a result of this because he and Yoru have unfinished business. Now, really quick before we get out of here, I've got the Reze video essay in the hands of an editor, 16 minutes in length, and they're working on it right now. I'm hyping it up now because I strongly believe this is the best Chainsaw Man video essay I've done since that Makima video. Video essay I dropped a few months back, which you can check out here on the screen if you haven't already. 